Hi everyone, I'm uh, Jesse Newton. Um, so when I was growing up in New Zealand, um, I can always remember my, my mother saying to me, you know, you reap what you sow and uh, you create your own reality. But um, you know, as a six-year-old, I didn't really get it. <laughs> but uh, eventually, you know, with the repetition, reinforcement of the messages, by the time I got to university, it start, slowly started to sink in. And, uh, but the interesting thing about university was that it was the first time in my life that I've, I, I'd reframed the way that I looked at classes and, and learning. Um, you know, throughout high school, I, I saw classes as a means for getting outside and playing rugby with my friends. I uh, didn't really enjoy it too much and uh, basically did what I could to, to get that passing grade and, and, and get out. Um, when I got to university, I was able to actually select the classes that you know, I was really interested in. And that sim simple shift in thinking about learning and classes um, had a dramatic performance in my, um, dramatic impact on my performance. Um, and so, you know, I went from this average high school student to this, you know, successful you know, university student to th through this shift of thinking. Um, and then when I finished university, I was uh, lucky enough to find consulting. And I uh, delved into change management and culture consulting. And then over the, the course of a few years, I, I got to live around the world and exposed to a number of large companies um, and a number of different types of, of change. But you know, through those experiences, it was really evident to me that there was this hidden uh, potential, this hidden opportunity to really drive sustainable change by looking at the way people think. Or to my mother's point, the way that you create your own reality. And so I discovered uh, positive psychology in my capstone class in MSLOC. And um, it, was, it was fantastic, but I was able to take a deep dive into positive psychology, appreciative inquiry, and positive organizational behavior. And, and the interesting thing about taking a deep dive into positive psychology is that you know, there are all of these incredible benefits that they, they say you can, um, you, know, you can witness, you can experience if, you, if you're simply happy or if you en engage with positive thinking. Things like you know, a better marriage, uh, more friends, more successful at work, uh, better health. But there wasn't a, a lot of that deep sort of quantitative backing to really support it that I needed to really buy into it. It made sense to me, but I needed more. And that's where I discovered, uh, when I finished the program, neuroscience. Um, and neuroscience is all about how your mind works, how your brain works. But the most interesting thing about it is that it was that, that scientific evidence, that proof that I needed, that, that links happiness, positive psychology with performance. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll show you a couple of images and I want you to think about your, your automatic reaction to it, the, the, the feelings and thoughts you have to some of these images. <laughs> is that one? And then I'll show you one more. So, so neuroscience, as I said, you know, is all about how your, your mind works. And I want you to, to think about the, your reactions to those images, and I'll get to them soon. Um, in your brain, at any one time, there are billions of neurons um, firing all over the place. Every time you think in a certain way or act in a certain way, you have neurons that are developing neural pathways in your brain. And so the more that you think and act in a certain direction, you know, the more that you're strengthening a certain neural pathway, you're, you're developing a habit. habit. Um, but there are also sections of your brain that are responsible for different emotions. And so depending on how you're feeling during the day will influence um, where, which part of your brain you're, you're operating in. And so when, you, when we looked at that first image of that axe murderer, uh, you probably felt a little bit frightened. You probably felt a little bit scared or uneasy, a little bit anxious. And so what's happening is your amygdala is taking over. And um, this is a primal part of your brain. It's, it's, you think about like uh, caveman days, a saber-toothed tiger jumping out of a bush and running towards you. You want to be thinking very clearly about two things, either getting out of there or putting up a fight. And so that section of your brain restricts your thinking um, and is focused on, on those kinds of behaviors. The hypothalamus is another primal part of the brain and it's, it's where you, you know, thirst and pain and uh, sexual desire comes from. And so, for all you ladies out there, whenever Jason Becker walks by, it's your hypothalamus that's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> your, um, your, your basal ganglia is your, your habit center. So all of these um, ingrained behaviors, when you're thinking and operating in a certain way, you're operating your basal ganglia. So 
when you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you, you comb your hair and you do whatever you do first thing in the morning, it's this unconscious competence that's going on. And then your prefrontal cortex is the section of your brain where you do all your creative thinking, you're innovating, you're strategic planning, and most importantly, you're learning. And you really, to, to really operate effectively in that, in that section of your brain, you need to be, um, you need to be relaxed and, happiness and, and happy. And so that image of that bunny that you saw, it probably made you feel relaxed, it probably made you feel good, you, you probably relax, um, smiled a little bit. What that does is that shifts that focus away from other sections of your brain to a, a section of that brain where you're optimizing performance. And so that's the, that's the really key point. Your brains are literally hardwired not to perform at their best when they're negative or neutral, but when they're positive. And so the, the key point here is, you know, all of us, we grew up thinking that, you know, if we achieve a certain goal like getting into a good school or getting good grades, I mean, obviously I didn't care about that so much, but, um, you know, later on in your career, getting promoted or into a, um, a good company, that would then lead to happiness. But neuroscience and positive psychology is telling us that it, happiness then leads to that success. And then when we apply that to employees in the workforce, you know, when you support an environment that really promotes positive thinking and happiness, you're not only allowing people to best achieve their potential, but you're also encouraging sustainable change. And so I don't have time to go into the specific tactics to build those patterns of thinking, but it's just food for thought. Thanks.